Welcome to Circuit Moments. What I'd like to do today is really continue our discussion on Thevenin's theorem, but this time we're going to look at an AC circuit. Okay, things get a little bit more difficult when we consider AC circuits with uh, complex impedances. All right, let's look at this case over here. Um, we have a 20 volt sinusoidal voltage source over here. Let's say that's an RMS value. We'll work in RMS. Okay, uh, we have an inductor sitting over here and at the particular frequency of operation it has an impedance of, um, of J40. Okay, what we want to do is we want to thevenize this circuit. Okay, this is going to be our load resistance sitting over here so we're going to basically remove that load and we're going to thevenize this part of our circuit over here. All right, so let's redraw this with the load actually removed, just as we did before. So here's our source. We've got this resistor here, which is 30 ohms. And then, of course, we've got the impedance sitting over here, which is a J40. And here are our terminals A and B. And this is our voltage source over here, which is 20 angle zero. All right. The Thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage, so it's really the voltage I'm measuring at those two terminals, really with that load gone. Okay, so what I've really got here, again, is a voltage divider. All right, so let's just see if we can write our Thevenin voltage. Thevenin voltage is equal to this impedance over here. So I'm going to express this guy in a polar form. So I'm going to write that as 40 angle 90. So that's a 40 at an angle of 90, divided by the sum of the two, so that's a 30. Um, I'm going to write this in its rectangular form, so that's a plus J40. Uh, and, of course, that's multiplied by my source voltage over here, which is 20 at an angle of 0. All right, what we need to do then is we need to convert this uh, uh, part of our expression in the denominator into a polar form. Okay, remember how we do that? Okay, so under currently that bit is in rectangular form, so we need to find the magnitude, which is basically, what, 30 squared plus 40 squared, and we take the square root of that. And then as far as the angle is concerned, theta is going to be the inverse tangent of the imaginary bit, which is 40, divided by the real bit, which is 30. Okay, so let's see if we can rewrite that now. V Thevenin is really equal to 40, angle 90, uh, multiplied by 20, angle 0, divided by this now in its polar form would be 50 uh, at an angle of 53, de actually 53.13 degrees. Okay, we can now simply uh, multiply 40 by 20 divided by 50, which gives us 16. And then our angle is, if we bring this angle up to the numerator, it becomes a minus 53. And so we take 53 from the 90, which gives us a 36.87 degrees. And that is our V feminine. All right, now we need to find Z Thevenin. Um, and what we can do in order to do that is basically find the short circuit current. So we're going to put a short between terminals A and B, and we're simply going to calculate ISC, I short circuit. All right, let's have a look at that. The I short circuit current, well, basically uh, our current is going to go through the 30 ohm resistor it's not going to go through here, it's simply going to follow this path like so. Simple in this case. So I short circuit is equal to this 20, angle 0, divided by 30 ohms. Um, and this comes out to be um, 0 0.67 amps at an angle of 0. Okay. Z7 in 
is equal to, of course, the Thevenin voltage, which is 16, at an angle of 36.87, divided by the short circuit current, which is 0.67 amps, at an angle of zero. And if we evaluate this, it comes out to be um, 23.88 at an angle of 36.87. So it's a complex impedance for Z Thevenin. Let's now draw that Thevenin equivalent circuit and then we can put the load back. Okay, so our Thevenin voltage um, is 16 angle 36.87 in series with an impedance which is the Z Thevenin which is 23.88 at an angle of 36.87 okay there's our terminal A and here is our terminal B we can then reattach the load which in this example was just, what, a 25 ohm resistor. What I'd like you to do again is pause at this time and um, go ahead and calculate uh, this load current, okay, using this Thevenin equivalent circuit. All right, I hope that was relatively easy for you. So let's do it together. Okay. Load current. Okay, so what we've got in our circuit is a, a voltage equivalent, um, and this is the impedance, the Thevenin impedance, in series with the load uh, resistance over here. So, therefore, um, that current, IL, I for load, is equal to um, the voltage source, which is 16 at an angle of 36.87. And that's divided by the impedance in the circuit, which is what? Which is really this guy here, which is 23.88 at an angle of 36.87 plus that 25 ohm resistor. Okay, so in order for us to proceed with this really, we need to really convert this part here back into a rectangular form. And then we can add the 25 to it and proceed from there. All right, converting this part into rectangular. Remember how we do that, okay? Um, we can say that the real component is really what? It's this magnitude, which is 23.88 multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which is 36.87. Uh, the imaginary bit is really what? It's that same magnitude, which is 23.88, uh, multiplied by the sine of that angle, which is 36.87. So if we evaluate those, those two parts there, we'll have the real and imaginary component of that impedance. So we can say that IL is equal to 16, angle 36.87, Performing this, or evaluating this, we have the real bit being 19.10 um, plus the imaginary bit, J, 14.33, and then still plus that 25. So we're going to add the two real bits together. So therefore, this load current, IL, is 16 the angle is 36.87, that's divided by, adding this to this, we have 44.1 plus a J, 14.33. Well, the next step now is to convert this back into a polar form, okay? So it's that bit squared plus that bit squared, square rooted gives us the uh, magnitude and then the angle is the inverse tangent of the imaginary component over the real component. So if we do that, we get 16, our angle here is 36.87, 
This is divided by the magnitude being 46.37 and the angle being 18 degrees. So, finally we have 16 divided by 46.37 gives us a current of 0 0.345 amps and the angle that's bringing this guy up to the numerator, it changes its sign, so it's 36.87 minus 18 gives us an angle of 18.87 and that represents our load current. Now what you could do as an exercise is go back to this original circuit over here um, and see if you can now calculate the load current. You'll see this is much more involved, the process is more involved but it's a, it's a good exercise for you to actually do. Well, look, the more practice you have, the better you're going to be at doing this sort of stuff. I'll see you next time.